Hi everyone, welcome to a video that's been requested as a follow-up for my latest uh, Moving With Your Cats video, which you should really check out before or after watching this one. I'll throw the link down in the description below. So, uh, and before we get going, please remember to squish that subscribe button and pet the bell notification icon so you get more of these helpful videos. Uh, also, you can check out my Patreon and support me on there if you think I'm doing good work. But uh, what I'm going to do today is me and Sir Lancelot are going to answer a question that came up quite a number of times when I made a video about moving with your cats. And that question was, what do we do if we have to fly? Lots of people are flying transatlantic with their cats or even further. Um, and this is actually a question that pulls up with something I get asked by my clients quite often, which is, hey doc, can you give me some sedation for my cat or my dog as we're traveling somewhere or we're going vacation or moving house? So let me answer all those questions. And I, just so you know, I have extensive personal experience moving with cats. Uh, Mr. Pirate came with me from Australia to Canada, then from Canada to the United States, from New York. And then, so he's flown across North America at least twice from New York back to Vancouver. Uh, so that little guy is probably one of the most traveled cats in the world. Uh, Lancelot here is a homebody. He's Vancouverite, born and bred. However, he's also regal. And he will help me with this video in his magnanimity. <laughs> and maybe we'll give you guys a little bit of Mr. Pirate footage as a bonus, just because he is probably one of the best traveled cats in the world. When preparing to travel with your cat, uh, and if flight's involved, what you really have to ask yourself is, is the cat coming to cabin with me or are they going in the pressurized luggage compartment? Because this really, really, really determines everything. Most airlines will allow you to fly with your pets. Uh, and if they're small enough to fit under the seat, they can come in the cabin with you. And if they're not, they go in a pressurized luggage. Uh, and if the airline doesn't allow you to do this, uh, complain a lot and fly with someone else because they're bastards and you should only support airlines that allow travel with pets. Uh, so the pressurized luggage compartment is, you have to understand, it's its under the plane. It's probably about four degrees Celsius, so it's above zero, but it's cold. And the air pressure there is going to be probably a little bit lower than the cabin. So it's a pretty stressful environment, uh, probably louder than the cabin as well. As I'm just guessing because I've never been there, but but probably not as well insulated as where they put the humans. So going in the luggage compartment is is gonna be a little bit more stressful. And here's where I can answer that question about, can I give you any sedation for your trip? So if your pet is going in the pressurized luggage compartment, the answer is absolutely not. Uh, there is studies showing that any kind of attempt at sedation for airplane travel actually increases travel mortality, meaning that increases your chances that your pet dies in, on the trip. Nobody wants that. And also, there's no sedative that's gonna work long enough to cover a trip. You know, most, most of the anti-anxiety sedative medications we have work for like two to four hours, which isn't really long enough to cover a door-to-door -door trip uh, if you're flying across the Atlantic or flying from Australia to Japan. So not only is there no benefit to doing sedation for animals going under the plane, but it's also increases the travel risk. So absolutely not, never ever sedate your pet if they're going under the plane. What you can do to make their trip a little bit more comfortable is First of all, make sure they have lots of towels and blankets in their carrier. Uh, the airline will specify that you have, you have an airline certified carrier. So you're gonna get the carrier based on what the airline tells you. Uh, make sure there's lots of towels and blankets in there because water can spill, they can pee on route, they can poop on route. You don't want them in there with one little square towel because it's gonna get disgusting. You want them there with lots of towels, lots of blankets, so that if they do pee or poo or vomit or anything else in there, it'll just get absorbed and they can kind of scratch, tuck it away and still have a comfortable, clean ride. And they can also burrow in them for heat, so it's gonna be, if it gets cold in the compartment, they can they can settle down for some warmth. And I also always recommend putting in some personal clothing items, like a t-shirt you slept in, some socks, um, just to make it smell like home, smell like their favorite human. And uh, again, they can also sit on it, hide on it, whatever. I think it makes their life better. So lots of blankets, lots of towels, never any sedation and some personal clothing items and your pet will be set up for a trip on the plane. Now, if your pet's going in the cabin with you where you can monitor them and where you don't want them making noise to disturb other passengers, or conversely, if you're driving for 12 hours and you have one of those cats that won't shut up and will meow every three seconds for 12 hours straight, because they exist, um, in those cases, travel sedation is your friend. And there's a number of medications available to provide different levels of very effective short-term, meaning like a couple hours uh, of sedation out there, you should really be having a conversation with your pet, with your veterinarian. <laughs> Don't have that conversation with your pet. Have that conversation with your vet. 
uh, you should really be having a conversation with your veterinarian because there's a number of choices and there's all sorts of concerns vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, where you live, what your pet's health status is, blah, 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 about which medications we choose. But I'm just gonna throw some names out at you. Gabapentin, Alprazolam, Trazodone, uh, and a number of others are all used for anti-anxiety, basically short-term sedation in pets for travel. And um, they should probably be something you have, but particularly if you fly, probably a good idea to have a means of helping your pet relax and get sleepy and not meow for like 12 hours or worse bark. Um, now, when I do prescribe travel sedation to my, to my clients and my patients, uh, what I always do is I give people a couple doses of the medication and I say, try this at home, a couple like when everything's normal, give this to your pet at home and see how they react to it. Because every individual reacts to sedatives differently. Um, you can get something called idiopath or idiosyncratic excitement, uh, which is where some patients, if you give them a dose of, of sedatives, they'll actually get really, really high and really hyperactive and just go, they look like they just did three lines of cocaine. And usually that's a dosing issue. You just give them a bit more and they'll go to sleep. Um, but you really want to find out if your pet's going to react this way to the prescribed dosage at home, not on the plane. Uh, so what you want to do, and conversely, you, know, you might give your pet a dose and then maybe it'll pass out for like six hours, which is okay. Uh, and then you know that you're zeroed in, but definitely try this at home under a controlled, calm environment before you travel so that on the day, you know what dose is going to work for your pet. Or conversely, if you can't figure out a dose, then you have time to phone your veterinarian in the morning and say, hey, doc, this is what happened. Uh, this is what I observed. How can I modify my treatment regimen to get effective sedation? And again, that way, on the day of travel, when it matters, you'll be able to provide your, um, you know, you'll be able to control your pet's anxiety, basically, and also provide yourself and your fellow passengers with a comfortable trip. So that's probably all you need to know about traveling on planes with animals. No sedation if they go in the compartment, and planned sedation if they go in the passenger uh, compartment with you. Now, please do go check out my video on tips on moving with cats for the bigger picture of how to help your cat relocate from point A to point B. And thank you very much for watching.